first to face the dragons is New York-born Melissa Snova. When you make a new product, it's a little bit like having a baby. Uh, you are in a lab developing it for a while, and then you show it to the world. But fingers crossed, the dragons will like it and will be walking out with a smile. Melissa has come up with an innovative way for the nation's candy lovers to get their fix. And luckily for some, her business also has a healthier side. That is not me, is it? Look, I've gained a few pounds. Hello, I'm Melissa Snover, the head magician and founder of the Magic Candy Factory. Today I'm looking for an investment of 80,000 pounds in exchange for 2% of my business. The Magic Candy Factory is the world's first and only 3D food printer to be certified and safe for live, public, and commercial use. People can write words, make 3D shapes, or even upload photographs to create their very own sweet selfie. I made a few of you guys up here. Magic Candy Factory launched its first printers into the market in 2016 in April. And since then, we've deployed over 100 machines in different retail, travel, and entertainment venues across the globe. But in addition to that, we're launching a new concept in personalized supplements. So people will go online and they'll be able to choose seven active ingredients from 27 different options across minerals, vitamins, probiotics. And then we will 3D print them their customized vitamins and send them in the post with less inconvenience convenience, less cost, and less waste. The future of wellness is 3D. I hope you'll agree. And I made you some um, examples, and I can show you here. Customized candy, as well as personalized vitamin supplements, are the offerings from Melissa Snova. She's looking for £80,000 in return for a 2% share in her 3D printing business. If I kiss the frog, I might get a You prince. might. You never Let know. You never know. A fairy tale taste test. Actually, it's very nice. But Tuka Suleiman wants to go back to the very beginning of the story. Melissa. Yes. How did you start with all this? So I started making candy about seven, eight years ago because I'm a vegetarian and I couldn't find gummy candy without gelatin that tasted good. And so I came up with my first uh, consumer brand, Goody Good Stuff. I sold Goody Good Stuff about two and a half years ago to a large conglomerate. And at the end of that, uh, one of my biggest frustrations was that you couldn't make customized products in a normal factory. So the Magic Candy Factory was my vision to allow the consumer to create their own product. And how much did you sell your company for? Unfortunately, it's undisclosed. Um, I'm not allowed to say what we sold it for. Was it in the millions? Yes. And where would I find this in the UK? We actually leased the printers to a retail outlet for a period of time. So uh, it was in stores nationwide for Christmas. Fine. The other machine you've got there is the vitamin machine. Yes. So I want some vitamins. I go on your website and I say, I'm short of iron, I'm short of this. It'll be calculated. Bing, it'll say, you need X, Y, and Z, and we'll put you on a year's subscription. Yeah, that's correct. And then we will send them in the post. There'll be lots of options. So one month will be one price, three months will be cheaper, a 12-month subscription will be less. Impressive. Thank you. Two potential sources of revenue for Melissa, who's made a good first impression on the dragons. Now, Jenny Campbell wants to find out exactly what's brought her to the den. You're a successful businesswoman. Thank you. You had a business and you sold it for many millions. So I'm intrigued, first of all, as to what you want a mere £80,000 for. Why do you need a want a dragon? So what I really want from this experience and the reason I wanted to come on was that I'm about to go into two markets that are not my specialty, so vitamins and supplements and direct-to-consumer, totally digital online business. And so I really would like to have the expertise of someone who has more in those areas. Okay, so it's more about the building blocks for your business, the vitamins business. That's exactly right, yeah. Funny that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Melissa. Hi, how are you? Very well, thanks. Um, vitamins has been my business for many, many years. 
And just going with your vitamin uh, machine at the moment, how long does it take to produce a pack? Right now, we're currently testing at five minutes for a one month supply. It is still a prototype, and we do hope to be able to get it down to about three minutes. But for a one month personalized vitamin um, at the moment, that cost price is still netting us about a 50% margin. Wow. In terms of customization, I see things going there. I don't know if it is today, but it definitely is moving towards that direction. Yeah. Praise for Melissa's product from the Vitamin King, who appears to share her vision for the future of supplements. But Tuka Suleiman wants to drill deeper into the mechanics of her business. How much money have you raised to get this off the ground? Um, the original investment that was put in from myself and my other uh, shareholder and the other director mm. was around about 800,000. And who, and who are the shareholders? Just myself and my business partner, Bastian Pacine. And, and, and how much do you own the business? 10%. You own 10%? Yes. Oh, and who owns the rest? He does. Is he an active shareholder? No. He's a passive show. Yes. So what does he do? He has his own candy business based in Germany, which is very old, about 100 years old. He what has a lot of called? responsibility. Catches. But Melissa, surely, if he owns 90% of the business, yep. he should have been here. Well, he, he didn't feel like he needed to be here. Day to day, no, I run no, the company and the entire operation. But, but I mean, do you have the mandate to negotiate? Yes, yes, I do. The revelation that Melissa only owns a 10% chunk of the business has given the dragon something to chew on. And Peter Jones has spotted something on her candy's packaging which could further sour the mood in the den. So the product here, and you, the guy that owns Catches, is that right? Yeah. This is his branding? Yes, it is, yeah. And are they in the UK? No, they're not in the UK, no. And is this almost like a division of their company then? No, I, I don't see it that way at all. Um, but why we, do you use their brand? It's, their brand's not known here. In the very beginning, um, we called it Magic Candy Factory on its own. And as it started to grow, we both decided we felt it was a good opportunity to also raise awareness about catches. And at the end of the day... Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is all words. So I'm, I'm going to break this down because I'm good at this. I don't buy it. The reason why I don't buy it is that you've got an investor that isn't here today and owns 90% of the company. And you're putting his brand on a product that he's got nothing to do with, apparently. Well, he does have something to do with it because he made it possible for us to get to market. Where did the to... money come from? Did he personally put the money in or did he use his company vehicle to put the, the money in? The money is in the business through the company. Right. Okay. You're now a division of his global operation. Actually, that's not true because all of the major decisions that would happen within the company require unanimous agreement between myself and it's still, him. It's still irrelevant because he hasn't personally invested. He is the other person named on the shareholders agreement. It is, says his name. You're a businesswoman. You know exactly what you're doing here. You are a subsidiary in the UK of his business. I really don't see it that way, but I understand your point no, but and the I facts, take it on board. The fact, let's go back. The facts are true, though. That's true. Have you got your shareholders agreement here? I do, yeah. One second. So the... Don't worry, I'll find you'll it. You'll find it? Okay, I've seen lots perfect. of shareholders agreements. You've seen lots Thank and you. lots of shareholders <laughs> agreements. There we go. Just to be absolutely clear, this is not an agreement between you and Mr. Fasin. This is an agreement between you and Katja. Yes. That's actually pretty catastrophic as far as I'm concerned. Cat Jess basically own this business and they've incentivized you with 10% to be their manager. I've also invested in the business I know, myself. That's but... not an unusual structure in a private equity type arrangement. And that's what we've got here. It's not one I want to sit as a junior partner in. So I'm really sorry, Melissa, I'm out. A blow for the entrepreneur who has lost her first dragon. Melissa's pitch is in danger of imploding. Is Tuka Suleiman sufficiently enthused by the technology to overlook the contentious German connection? I think we are just coming to a new revolution in 3D printing. And just as you thought about vitamins, 
there'll be something else, there'll be more vitamin machines. We're at the beginning. Uh, well, I think you've done great. Thank you. However, the share structure concerns me. But it's just complicated. And I, I've got, I want a simple life at my age. So for that reason, I'm not gonna invest, I'm out. Having, having said that you're a successful businesswoman, I'm now going to say, actually, I find you coming into the den today on the basis of this proposition very naive. You've sold a business, OK? When you sell a business, you, as the owner, go in front of the buyers and you sell that business. But Mr Fasine, he's not even here. So um, I'm going to declare myself out. More disappointment for Melissa as a second and a third dragon decline the chance to invest. Does Peter Jones find the notion of a tie-in with the absentee Willy Wonka any more appealing? I like the idea of, of 3D printing. I like this moving forward. But whatever deal can be done, it's impossible to get away from the very issue that control will always exist with the very person that is actually branding on the back of your product. I'm now going to be an investor in a subsidiary of a conglomerate. That's not what I want. What? I'm sorry to hear that, but yeah. honestly, this is really not the way that it is in real life. No, it is. It is in real life. So for that reason, sadly, it's not for me and I'm out. Four dragons have walked away from the deal. Only supplement supremo Tej Lalvani now remains. Will his expertise in this particular market allow him to identify an opportunity that the others have missed? I need to ask you one question. Yes? Would you go into business with someone you haven't met? Without Mr. Fasin, we would have never brought the, got these two products to market. I know that he is very excited about the opportunity to work with someone, specifically you, that is very experienced in vitamins. This is just not how I do business. Yeah. If he owns 90% of the business, and I'm going to be coming in as a partner, I need to know who he is and what he is and what he does and what his plans are. It's absolutely senseless, I mean, to come in with it with a proposal like this. I'm really, really annoyed about it. At the end of the day, I'm not in the den to be investing in subsidiaries of corporates. I'm investing in people. And you don't control the company. So I'm going to say this is not for me. I'm out. Thank you guys so Thank much. You. Thank you. Melissa must leave the den with nothing. Her deal with the German candy giants may have enabled her to turn her 3D vision into reality, but it also scuppered her chances of snaring a dragon. That certainly wasn't the sweetest deal we've had in the den, that's for sure. No. I feel disappointed um, that the main focus of the discussion was around the ownership of the business and not around the incredible innovations that we've developed. The products are what we are most proud of and um, I was really glad to see that they liked them uh, in the initial instance. Next into the den is Mustafa Mehmet from Kent. An entrepreneur on a mission. I want to make a mark and a difference and be a leader at something rather than just do a regular job. I've always kind of been that driven and that ambitious. And he'll do whatever it takes to get investment in his innovative product for the beauty industry. So if they really start giving me a hard time, I'm just going to fight back and stand my ground, stick to my guns. But will Mustafa's business idea put him in the dragon firing line? Hello Dragons, my name is Mustaf Mehmet. I'm the founder of a company called Wellgel London Limited and I'm here today to ask for £70,000 in exchange for 35% of my company, um, new startup company. Wellgel London Limited is 
a unique all-in-one natural non-toxic gel nail system. Um, Aisha is going to demonstrate the ease of application as I'm doing my pitch. Um, there's, it's completely chemical free um, and the idea of it is to provide a faster, healthy alternative to the gel nail industry with only an application time of 15 minutes as opposed to 40 minutes with conventional systems on the market already. Um, the industry today, just in the gel nail market, is worth 453 million. Um, so it's, it's vastly escalating by 35% every year and it's become the number one beauty selling product. It's overtaken lipstick sales. We have sparked an interest on Facebook. We have 2,396 followers. But you're looking to potentially invest in a company that wants to make a change in an industry and lead by example um, with a new natural alternative product. So remember the next time, ladies, you have your nails done. Don't just be gel, be well gel. A polished pitch from Kent-based Mustafa Mehmet, which he hopes will nail him a £70,000 investment. In return, he's offering a 35% stake in his business, supplying gel manicure products with a natural twist. Thank you. A simple proposition, but Deborah Meaden is a little perplexed. I'm fascinated. How did you get into nails? Uh, <laughs> Forgive me, but you don't look. <laughs> no. You don't look like the target market. No, um, so I used to be a car sprayer before. A car sprayer? Car sprayer and panel beater, and I used to customise cars. Brilliant. Went from spraying cars for McLaren, Mercedes, Ferrari, Aston Martin, to wanting to understand why when I spray a panel, does the paint even stay on the panel? So I studied rheology, which is the uh, study of paint. And to me, this is just another paint system, and my surface is a nail rather than a car door or the paint on your walls. OK, but fill in that gap. At what point did you sit there and think, sp spraying your Ferraris <laughs> in your ass? I know, what I, I know what I'll do. I'll create some nail gels. I mean, how did that happen? So I went to the salon with my sister. She was getting her nails done. I'd been there for about 40 minutes. The back of my throat was getting irritated. <laughs> I was feeling quite... i go out for air because of the environment. And I was just looking the way they achieve an end finish. They use three to four different components to end up with one finish. So I thought I could re-engineer this and make it a better product. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, is this your product? Have you actually created...? This is my developed product. How much quicker is this than the, the existing so it's method? it's a 15-minute application. So on average, um, if you do a manicure and a gel application, it takes an experienced manicurist, half an hour to 40 minutes. So more than twice as fast? Yes. You can double your turnover from the same premises? Yes. Some of them actually use it as an express gel um, right. alongside their existing gel products. You've come in and you've said, this is quicker than anything else. Mm-hmm. It is. And I know it's not. But now technicians who have been in the industry for 20 years have told me it is. But it's not, because I know that there are other products out there that loads of people have, that I've had, where you go in, you've got to be really quick, it's one coat, cure, out. That's, that is your product. So, so, so there's, there was that claim. So is your point of difference the environmental bit? My point of difference is the environmental bit is completely non-toxic and expect and mothers can wear it. So I'm the only one that can literally state, and it, it has it written on the bottle, that it's suitable for pregnant women. Mustafa calmly covers all the bases and seems to be keeping Sarah Willingham on side. But is Deborah Meaden convinced by his claim that the product is non-toxic and natural? So, Mustafa, it's taken out all those nasty bad stuff in the existing product, yes? yes? There are no um, carcinogenic uh, materials in there, so there are, it's not a solvent-based product. So you've got the facts that can back that yes. up? Yes. It's been SGS tested, um, which SGS is an independent body that tests chemicals, and they do their own due diligence. I've got the documents to say it's non-toxic. 
Actually, I might read the documentary if you don't mind. And, and by the way, it's very non toxic, it's very different to natural. Natural, yeah. I'll find it. Oh, sorry. It's, um, because <laughs> it's split in two, sorry. Pass it to me. Sorry. There you go. And it's I will through there. find it. It's through Thank there. you. This is something that you'd like to start. This is something that I'm really passionate about because I've So if you start this, yeah, as a startup, yeah, I mean, how are you going to pay yourself? Um, through through investment, that I'm yeah, seeking but, yeah, today. Yeah, but, yeah, well, but seventy thousand is not going to get you very far. It will get the product out on the market to do beauty shows, trade shows. Show me an order. I haven't got an order. I've oh. got an interest. And that's, <laughs> Listen, but that's why I'm, I'm an here. expert. You know, all due respect, I think you're going to struggle. You will struggle. And I think 70,000 is not enough. But you're going to need three or 400,000 to have any chance of getting this out there. You're going to run out of money. I don't believe, apart from money, that I can add any value to this. Do you own the rights to the formulation, or so is it...? So I own... Um, 50% of the formulation, which is the important part, it's been co-developed with a laboratory in China. So half of this is owned by somebody else? By the laboratory. It, it, it doesn't hit me as an, as an investment for, for me personally. And I think you, you, it's something that's got to hit with you and you've got to get excited about it. It almost seems too good to be true as well. So there's quite a lot going on. Um, and if another dragon invests, and it becomes successful, then I'm just going to end up being well gel. But um, I'm going to say that I'm out. So when you talked about it being safe and natural, completely, it says here it's not carcinogen carcinogenic. Yeah. So that is absolutely right. I wasn't expecting to read words like harmful if swallowed, absorbed through skin or inhaled, causes eye skin and respiratory tract irritation. Why would I read words like that on a really safe and natural product? So most products, if they're swallowed or, or put on the skin for an, a long length of time, would, would irritate the skin, depending on someone's no, allergies. Not, a, not at the level of natural. I thought we were talking about a safe, natural product. Use neoprene gloves. Chemical goggles should be used in combination with a full face shield. Mm. So they're, they're generics um, of most paint products. So you need to wear gloves, you need to wear eye protection. You can't use words of this is a non-toxic product when it is a toxic product. They don't say on a non-toxic product, keep individual calm, get medical attention immediately. I assure you that is just a generic format for any paint product on the market, whether it's water-based. You didn't say this is safer than the other paint products. You said it was non-toxic. So on the nail, not the skin, it's non it's non toxic. Yeah, no. This is actually saying that heated up to a certain heat and if there's any mist or if there's any spillage or it is toxic. Like petrol is at a fuel station. If it's heated up at a certain temperature, everything's got a flash point. I'm sorry. You're you're now changing the story that started completely natural and non-toxic, and you're now saying, well, actually, yes, but you know, in the real world no, out no, there, everything I, has I'm a shape. I'm just trying like to this, address what you've asked me. It's not what you told me it was. And the bit that you, you misled me on is the bit that really, really had my interest. Um, I'm glad I read that, but I won't be investing. I'm out. The entrepreneur may have stood his ground, but ultimately he failed to convince a disillusioned Deborah Meaden to invest in his startup. Thank you very much. Good luck. He leaves the den with nothing but a belief that he's been misunderstood. Deborah made some harsh comments about it being, um, you know, not non-toxic in relation to the skin. The product's for nails, you know, it doesn't damage the nail. I stick to my guns. Our next entrepreneur has an impressive and varied CV. He's a Cambridge postgraduate with careers in modelling and banking under his belt. My strategy in the den is just be myself, put across my passion in the business. I'm not feeling uh, particularly nervous. 
I've delivered thousands of presentations to multi-billion dollar finance hedge funds who rip you apart if you miss a punctuation and then you get castigated. So I, to be honest, I, um, I feel quite excited actually, yeah. Um, hi, dragons. Um, no, do this. Um, hi, good afternoon, dragons. Um, my name is Sunil Kavui, and I'm here to offer you 5% of my food to go business, Great Grub, in exchange for £80,000. I'm, I have been a successful model, I've been a successful investment strategist at a leading investment banks in the city, and now I run the food to go business, Great Grub. Um, a few years ago, I was working in the city, and I decided to take some time out and travel the world, and sampling the local cuisines. And uh, then I decided to set up my food to go business, and then Great Grub was born. Um, Great Grub is a food to go business inspired by street food on the go. All our products are halal, and there's five, um, um, main trends that are revolutionising the food to go industry. One, food on the move. Two, healthy eating. Expansion of branded concepts. Greater variety of choice and halal. At the moment, we're trialling in Asda, Sainsbury's. Um, we're in final talks to supply Compass and Sodexo for their football grounds and their universities and also in final discussions with EasyJet for their winter routes. Thank you, Dragons, for listening to my pitch and I have uh, um, some sample platters for you guys to try. With his sandwich wraps inspired by street food from across the globe. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll deliver two others. Oh, oh, you're sweet. Thank you so much. I'm sweet. Yeah. Sunil Kavori is hoping to appeal to the multicultural British consumer. Thank you, darling. But first, he'll need to tickle the taste buds of the dragons, who he's hoping to extract £80,000 from. In return for the cash, he'll give up 5% of his business. But first, Peter Jones wants to find out more about his colourful career. Sunil. OK, so tell me a little bit about yourself. So I, when I, I went to university at London School of Economics. I did my master at Cambridge University. And at the same time, I was modelling. So, um, you know, actually, I did a, quite a lot of work for Big Brother and O2 mobile phones in 2003. I became an A-list celebrity. I was on TV 70,000 times. You were, you were an A-list celebrity? Well, apparently so. But that was, you know, obviously I'm relatively educated. So I was doing this at the same time while I was studying. But the career progression was either going to acting or continue modelling or, or, or finance. And, uh, I mean, I decided to go finance. And, wh and which, you went to Cambridge University? Yeah. And what degree did you get? A master's in finance. My undergraduate, I studied at London School of Economics and I was awarded the Richard Galtz Prize for first out of 675 students. And so I, I joined actually Deutsche Bank after that and then I moved to Morgan Stanley. I did it pretty much the same and then at JP Morgan. Because I, I have a real work ethic. I used to get into work at about 6 o'clock, leave at 10, 11 o'clock. It's because I enjoy it. It's not, not necessarily for the money, it's just because inside I'm driven. I'm, I have a strong work ethic. I like being success in everything I do. What, what is special about the food? What we have found in the supermarkets is was the food was relatively boring. And I try to bring the street food concept, which the British public love, to the supermarkets, to the retail. So I believe that the product, it's not available um, at the moment um, relative to the competitors. Sunil continues to emphasize the work ethic that lies behind his food to go business concept. But Sarah Willingham, the investor who knows firsthand how to grow a lucrative food business, is far more concerned with his product. I think it's a very, very difficult market. If you're saying that your USP is that you're halal, my sandwich has got bacon in it for a start. No, no, it's halal, halal it's bacon. It's halal bacon? Yeah. It's not pork. It's, there's no pork in it. It doesn't... The, the, oh, okay. I think one of the issues is, is that your market is halal. But, um, it actually, it's a, a dual product. The reason why we made it halal is that any, everyone can eat it. It wasn't specifically for Muslims. It, uh, and you see a trend. All f brands are going that way, like from Subway, they've converted 200 of stores to halal. The problem is, is it's not communicated at all. So if I am Muslim, I want to, I want to know yeah. that that's not real bacon. And if I'm not, I want to know that it is real bacon, yeah. probably. 
So I, I think it's a very difficult market that you're entering and I think you've really got to be very, very good. Sarah Willingham casts doubt that Sunil's product range can find traction in a marketplace crowded with takeaway sandwich big hitters. But it's his packaging that has caught Nick Jenkins' attention. On this packaging, it has uh, Goga 4 Inc, 43 Barclays Square. Oh, yeah, Square. so that the, the company owns um, Great Grub. OK, so Goga, Goga, is Goga 4 Inc, Inc. So is that an American company? Sorry, is it what? Is it an American company? No, no, no. no. Why is it Inc? I, 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 I had my partner this asked, said, uh, suggested the name Goga 4 Inc. So I said, fine. Uh, no, I mean, no, I no, didn't no, care no. About... Sorry, sorry. There's a legal distinction because Goga, if it was, if it was a UK, is it a U... yeah, It's a UK it, company. It's yeah. a UK company. Okay. Then Inc. Uh, is is incorporated. It's a short for incorporated, an American oh. company. Oh, okay. Well, you worked in a bank. I mean, come on. Yeah, but I, I was on a trading floor. I don't. I mean, I, I don't. That's that's slightly but... worrying. I mean, uh, it, 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 this is quite, quite, quite basic. My partner chose the name of the company. No, no, it's not Go -Go the name of the Inc. company. Go -Go Inc. Inc. is not the name of the company. No, no it is. It's he, the legal designation of it. He, he, I know the, the legal designation. I'm, I'm not sure why he, he, he re well, registered the company. Well, I'm not sure why you didn't notice it. No, no, registered the company as Goga for Inc. Okay, so if I went into the company's house now and I would find Goga Go for Inc. Limited, would I? Yeah, I presume so. But it, it's just that you presume well, so. It's the name of your company. company. Sorry. Wrong. You presume because so. No, no, it's true. Yes, yes, you would find wrong. it. Quite apart, from would... the fact, quite apart from the fact that I'm, I, it, it concerns me that you own a company called Goga 4 Inc. Didn't strike you as slightly odd. Hmm. And you worked in three investment banks. God help us. A large dose of incredulity from Nick Jenkins over Sunil's uncertainty of his company's legal name. And now Peter Jones wants clarity on the price tag he's placed on his business. You're valuing the, this business at 1.5 million today. Yeah. So, how much money have you? Made? Give me, give me this year's revenue. And oh, profit. this year's revenue. I mean, we've only been trading for a year. Um, with 112,000 pounds, about 20,000 pounds profit. I um, yeah. Um, what? <laughs> What's disappointing is that you make the assumption that actually, Peter, that demonstrates that this business today is worth 1.5 million. Well, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Because unless you're going to tell me you have a forward contract with somebody which is going to give me comfort that the next 12 months mm. you're mm. earning substantially increase to get to yeah. a valuation in of this course. food business. So, no, so what is your forecast for the next 12 months? Forecast of sales and revenue is based on, I would say, EasyJet, Sedex and Compass, and a coffee chain. We, we, revenue is probably... Have you got any of those at the moment? Yeah, yeah. So okay. we're in discussions with them. I've, in discussions is different to actually... They, 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 no one signs a formal contract. So what is your forecast for the next 12 months? I would, I would say 1.1 million for revenue and 300,000 profit, net profit. But you don't have any contracts whatsoever that will support that at the moment? No. Sunil fails to justify that hefty valuation on his fledgling business. And that's not gone down well with Deborah Meaden. You are representing your business. And what happens in Dragon's Den is we ask you to explain your business. We haven't even got down to that. Because you're not really sure you presume that your name is going to be. No, 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 I, meant, I, I, I am sure. I just All said. Right, so, I, okay. I, I apologize. Although you don't appear to, to get the difference to between Inc. and Limited. I, I, I apologize for that. No way can you come in here and say that a business, £120,000 profit, sorry, £120,000 turnover, £20,000 profit, is worth £1.5 million. OK. You've g given me nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm really sorry. I, I won't go over it. Okay. I'm out. Thanks. Some food for thought from Deborah Meaden, who becomes the first dragon to walk away from the deal. Sarah Willingham, who made her millions rolling out restaurant franchises around the globe, has also arrived at a verdict. Sunil, um, the real problem is, and I, I understand why you did it, but when you come in here and you, you did spend a lot of time kind of giving us the sort of the big I am, and, and actually all we really want to know is about the sandwiches and how you're going to get it into the 
into the stores and why you love that and what's great about them. Um, I'm sorry, I'm out. OK, thanks. Sarah Willingham declined the opportunity to add great grub to her investment portfolio. Has Tuka Suleiman been convinced? Oh, silly. you look like you had seven rounds with uh, some heavyweight fighter. Mm, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, um, I'm not going to invest, but I, but I wish you all the best and I'm out. What I want is evidence of where this business is going to be in three years' time and the likelihood of that happening. I, I'm sort of expecting, a, you know, a, to, be, to be much sharper on that. I'm afraid I just can't get excited enough about this to invest. I'm afraid, unfortunately, I'm out. Oh, thanks, Nick. Okay, thank you. Nick Jenkins loses his appetite for investment and walks away from the deal. Only Peter Jones remains. So far, He's been unimpressed by Sunil's lack of forward contracts and his hefty company valuation. But has the food entrepreneur's work ethic struck any chords with this last remaining dragon? I think you've, you've made a misjudgment of the pitch that you've put across. Yeah. Um, I don't think you should take this personally. I'm not going to invest in the business, but I really think you need to go away, really think about the product, do a bit more research, look into it, Spend a bit more time with your partner and then look at how you can go and build a successful business, OK? OK, thanks. So I'm going to say, look, Sunil, I'm out, but I wish you the very best and good luck. OK, thanks, Peter. Unfortunately for Sunil, his sandwich business never managed to excite the dragons. He leaves the den with nothing. It's just such a tough market. I think, I think it's back to the drawing board for him. Mm. I think so, yeah. It is disappointing because, you know, they didn't look at my work ethic, my drive, my ambition, nothing. But it doesn't fault the long-term business potential, so I'll fight on. For sure, I'll fight on. Next into the den is Nilesh Pandit, a former footballer from London. He's a confident entrepreneur who believes his winning strategy will reward him with a trophy investor. If the Dragons tried to boss me around in the den, I don't believe it would work because everything's airtight. It's a proven business. Um, I've got the answers to all their questions and I've gone through it all and there's absolutely no pitfalls with the business. Hello Dragons, my name is Nilesh Pandit. I'm the Managing Director and Owner of Play Five Side Limited. Today, I am seeking £100,000 in exchange for 12.5% of the business. Play Five Side Limited began back in 2009, where our focus was after-work football leagues. Since then, our product range has diversified to include children's parties, corporate sports tournaments, other sports events like netball and, and so forth. I believe I've spotted a gap in the market. Uh, a few years ago, I was walking past an adventure playground. Uh, this playground had just received funding for a brand new sports pitch. However, it did not get the funding for fencing and floodlighting to go alongside it. So I approached the playground and I said to them, well, we can do that for you in exchange for commercial use in the evening. So we would let it out to our corporate clients. The playground naturally bit my hand off. So we have rolled this project out at five different locations, all with great success. Now, our key ambition is to partner with schools. So I'll give you an example. We would develop their surface for them, upgrade from their tarmac, again, free, completely free of charge. In exchange for that, we would ask for a set number of rent-free weeks to recoup the investment. The school would then charge us a rental after this investment is complete and then receive the revenue as a result of that. Um, looking at the figures, uh, Play Five Side Limited, since our inception, has turned over in excess of £2 million. Our most recent net profit figure is £137,000. In addition to this, I believe this is an idea that can really change the shape of Britain. Jenny Campbell is the first dragon to get the ball rolling. Tell me a little bit about you, what you've done before, how you came to this idea. Um, so. Back when I was about 15, 16 years old, I used to play, play on a semi-professional level. Um, then I had a bit of an ankle break, which led me to take time off, and I went into education. Um, but it was whilst I was on my internship where I spotted the gap in this market. Um, I cannot stand working 9 to 5.30. 
and I can't take direction, couldn't take direction from my bosses. I found myself very inactive. Ultimately, I spotted that teams within this company were playing five aside. So I decided to set up an internal work league for them, and the demand was crazy. Uh, then I went back to university, completed my degree, and I set up the biggest university football league. But the pitch development idea is one that's untapped, and that's the idea that I want to get into. Give me a sort of broad brush costing of you see a, okay. a playground and you go and pitch to the owner yeah, of sure. that. So a typical five-a-side uh, venue, which could be, say, 20 metres by 34, mm -hmm. could cost anywhere between 17k to 30k. You said that the business has turned over 2 million so far, mm -hmm. and in the last financial year that was 137. No, that was the net profit. So in the most recent financial year, yes. the turnover was 694,000. So it's going great guns. Oh, yeah, it's going, it's going very well at the moment. I can't, I, can't, I can't lie, it's very good at the moment. The healthy numbers have won Nilesh a fan in Jenny Campbell. But it's going to take more than talk of sizeable profits to impress Peter Jones. You're kind of basically a finance house. I wouldn't say so, but I'll, I'll let you continue. You'll let me continue? Yeah, sorry, you, uh, I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't finance the sense we'd provide activities. So why don't you get them to pay for it? Because a lot of them, they don't have the funding. I'm not sure if you've read recently, but a lot of youth services, the sectors, have actually had their fundings cut. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of people playing football, but you mentioned netball, but you wouldn't play netball on it. You could. I mean, if you look at the surfaces and obviously the lines there. Yeah, but they wouldn't play netball on AstroTurf. Of course, absolutely they would. No, they wouldn't. Absolutely they would. No, they wouldn't. 100% they would. Oh. Can I, should I tell you why they would want to play on AstroTurf as opposed to tarmac? Yeah, I'd love yeah. to. Right, so, you know, women and men, okay, if they're playing on tarmac, it's a hard surface. Straight away, damages your knees. In addition, we're in quite a rainy country. If it rains, tarmac, slip and slide. I do a lot of work with, with Netball England. In fact, my daughter actually is in the Drafting England squad. And I go every single weekend to matches all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, they will not want to be playing on AstroTurf. Okay. Yeah. So having known that, you didn't even ask me or even want to entertain why I might be so knowledgeable about netball. I can only apologise about that. Can you answer me the can't take instruction bit? I really want to get past that. So if I'm suggesting ideas and you clearly have a very strong opinion, yeah. where do you go with that? Um, you have achieved far more than I have, so I would definitely respect and take the opinions on board. And what would uh, you do with the opinion if you didn't still believe that I think we would just have a, right. just have a heart to heart like we like, like like we are now and just say well I don't believe it to work because of x y and z you can then come back and say well actually it should work because of x y and z so again it's the respect level again so I will always listen to okay. my staff Nilesh fact, that's really important I like this Nilesh Oh thank you okay so well, sorry about the previous Nilesh he's he's gone now he's left Great <laughs> yeah yeah that's great because yeah. this N Nilesh is is good okay it's a strong defence from Nilesh, who survives a grilling from Peter Jones to keep the dragon firmly on side. But next on the attack is Deborah Meaden, demanding more detail on those numbers. What are your retained profits? So, obviously, last year was £137,000. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, it was £122,000. Yeah and the year before that was 157,000. Okay, so I'm trying to square something off here. Let me understand, your capital investment is about 30,000 pounds. Because, yeah, per... right. You've right. got five pitches, so you've spent 150,000 pounds worth of cash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've made 350,000 pounds worth of... 400. 400,000 yeah. yeah. pounds worth of profit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's the rest of the cash? So the cash, um, I'm probably not understanding the question too well. So you've generated nearly £400,000 worth of profit. Yeah. You have reinvested about £150,000 into the business. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the rest of the money? So you're saying, what is the difference between 216 and 400? Yeah. OK, so there are, basically, there's a lot of uh, ongoing maintenance works. No, well, that's in your profit and loss. Yeah, OK. Unless you're not showing it in your profit and loss. No, no, it should, it should all be showed, but I'm, Any I don't... tax? I, I should, I should don't... Yeah, but tax is all paid up, so it's... it's no, all... no, I mean, out of the 400 profit, mm. you must have paid tax, so that yeah. comes off the 400. Is that yeah. pre- or post-tax? No, it's post-tax. Everything's post-tax. That's post-tax profit. Yes, yeah, so right. this, this is the bottom line. I get this little switch in me, and it says something's not working out here. OK. 
Yeah, I'm going to be honest, sir, I don't have, I, off the top of my head, I don't have the answer to that question. It's a big number. I'm not yeah. going to let... You can't just stand there and mm. say, oh, actually, I don't know where that £250,000 is. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. OK, well, um, all right, so a few years back, uh, so there was a, a HMRC penalty of um, around 200k. <gasps> which has been, now been paid off. OK, what was yeah. that about? Um, that was ultimately all about literally not showing the appropriate oh. uh, numbers within. So, to have a penalty of £200,000, how much did they say you weren't declaring? Um, again, I don't know. I don't know the numbers or something. Sorry, £200,000 tax penalty, mm -hmm. and you're telling me you don't know the numbers? I... I... I'm exasperated. Are you hearing these words? Yeah, yeah, I agree, yeah. OK. I think I know where... No, I know where I am. OK. Because Can if I... I gave you my money, mm -hmm. I would be absolutely terrified that you would fail to remember what you'd done with it. But people do learn from their mistakes, don't you think? That They become much, stronger. That okay. much money. It is a lot of money, but has that happened again since then? I have no idea. I'm really sorry about this, but I, that's done it for me. I'm out. Disaster for Nilesh, as his delay in revealing the reason his books don't balance leads to a swift exit from Deborah Meaden. Will Tej Lalvani be any more understanding? What concerns me is you mentioned that you've learnt from your mistakes. And when Deborah was questioning the gap in the accounts. You should have straight away brought it up then. Yeah. But you acted like you had no idea what she was talking about. She literally yeah, dragged I mean... it out of you. And if you said you've learnt from the mistakes, that should have been your opportunity to straight away explain what the gap was. I'm afraid I'm out. OK. We all make mistakes. Of course. But there are mistakes and there are mistakes. I agree. However, you weren't quite open with your figures. The mistake was made, were made a long time ago. Too. Fine, it's fine. Look, look. The question we're at now is: Am I going to part with my money with you? The answer is no. So I've got to say, I'm not going to invest in you, and I'm out. Okay. Thank you. I think it is very hard to sort of. Um, decide when when to pull your skeletons out of the cupboard or not because you probably thought well if I go in and say I had this lesson and then let's move on and talk about the future would that kill your pitch from the beginning yeah. but there is a moment in time when you you know need to be honest with people so just learn that lesson you you are a very credible young man Thank you. and you are running a successful business and hopefully paying all your tax now so, yeah, learn, absolutely, so yeah. learn from that I'm out Four dragons out, and it's beginning to look like it's all over for Nilesh. Peter Jones was previously won over by the entrepreneur's change of attitude. Will he be the one to save this rapidly sinking pitch? We didn't start off on the right foot, and I think that in business, people buy people first, and I, I think that's really, really, really important that you embrace that today. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to make it slightly worse for you um, I would have invested today because I really like the idea. I think it's very unique and it's good. Um, Is there anything I can do to change your mind? If you had just been really straight, that would have been okay with me, actually, even though it might have not been with others. Okay. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Thank you. Peter Jones shows the sports pitch business the red card, and the driven entrepreneur exits the den without the £100,000 investment he was so confident of securing. He had a moment to just tell the truth, and I just had to work too hard to get I completely agree with you, Tej, mm. to work too hard to get it out. Everybody makes mistakes. Unfortunately, I've been penalised for a mistake almost a million, million years ago, if you want to think of it in business terms. 
I guess they failed to realise that I lost everything and I still came back from it. Hello guys, I'm Ross Mendham, Managing Director of Bare Naked Foods. When I was younger, I was always slightly overweight and as a kid I was bullied as a result. In my teenage years I suffered from body dysmorphia and it really got me down. I did however decide to do something about it and I hit the gym and eventually got a six pack and a chest most men were envious of. I had just started another low carb diet and I was thinking, I really fancy pasta, but I couldn't eat it. So, started researching, is there an alternative? Couldn't find anything, so I thought, right, well, I'm gonna do it myself. And my company was born. There are two products we're currently selling online, our website. One is bare naked noodles, one is bare naked protein noodles. Both are under 30 calories, they have no fat, they're gluten free, they have no nasty ingredients either. What I'm going to do first is put some oil in the pan. Simply open the bag and drain the water. When you said two minutes, how many minutes do you actually mean? Um, I think, well, two minutes. I usually do this in two minutes. Did you hurry up? Yes. I think we're pretty much there, so another minute. So I'm going to get the plates out ready. Is that it? Thank you very much, Kelly. You've been a great help. Thank you. Could you serve it now? Yes. Leave him alone. What's the matter with you? Have some patience. A nervy pitch from Ross Mendham from Norfolk. Thank you. He wants £60,000 in return for a 20% share of his business. Having sampled Ross's noodles, the dragons want to discover more about their contents. You say they're gluten-free? Yes. Um, but you say they've got oatmeal in them. Mm -hmm. Is it a gluten-free...? It's uh, oatmeal flour. Um, oatmeal flour has shown that it doesn't have gluten in, but sometimes mimics um, gluten-like symptoms. I think you're wrong, because I actually have a gluten allergy. Oh, I can't, if I have normal oats, my fingers will swell up. I want to see this proof that says this is gluten-free. Uh, I'm going to explain that to you. Well, you probably part. need to, because at no point on that piece of paper does that say this has, is gluten-free. It's not, because uh, the ingredients is corn flour and rice flour, not oatmeal flour. So it's not gluten-free? It is gluten-free. Ross is struggling to win the confidence of the dragons. But will news of a potential distribution deal change the mood in the den? Currently, we have interest from two national um, high street retailers, one with 800 stores, one with 600. And we are very close to signing a deal with, um, with them. You have agreed a price to sell them? Yes, £1.33, and it costs us to make 41p. So you make 90, approximately 85, 90p per packet? Yes. To this company? Yeah. And they're going to take how many from you a month? 8,000. OK. And how much profit would that make you in a month? You have to forgive me, maths wasn't my strong point at school. I've, I'm starting to realise that. Yeah. <laughs> Ross's tenuous grasp of his numbers has frustrated his audience. And Deborah Meaden has heard enough. Ross, I've got to tell you, this is a very disappointing presentation from you. I don't think you know enough about this product to make the claims that are sitting on the front of this packaging. Um, and you need to be very careful about that. So I won't be investing in you, and I'm out. Thank you, Deborah. Problem is, the texture wasn't great. I, it really kind of disturbed me, the way it tasted. Now, what you said to Deborah was that it isn't oatmeal, it's actually corn and rice, yes. which is gluten-free. But why have you got oat, then, on the packet? You don't know your product well enough. So I agree 100%. For that reason, I'm out. With two dragons now having bowed out, 
Ross's chances of securing the healthy £60,000 investment he came for are looking slim. Duncan Bannatyne wants to find out more about the man behind the noodle. At the moment, how are you funding your lifestyle? Um, I have a fantastic wife who... Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Stay a minute, Ross, and come back. Sorry. I'll take your time. He should come back, or he's going to kick himself if he doesn't finish this. He'll come back, I guess. He'll come back. Do apologise. No problem. <clears throat> so obviously, this is something that's very emotional for you, but mm. I want to go back to the question about how you fund your lifestyle and you're talking about your wife. Yeah. Um, she supports both of us while I'm getting the business off the ground. And she's working to do that? Yes. Full time? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, um, she had her third miscarriage before I came here. Right. Sorry to hear that, Ross. <laughs> you know, it can only get better, Ross. It's only going to get better. What we've just heard, uh, it's, as we can see, emotionally heart-wrenching. Mm. And, uh, and yeah. it's great that you're here, but, but you're not here for sympathy. No, you're I agree. here to I gain agree. investment <laughs> yes. in a business yeah. that you were supposed to demonstrate had a future. I know. What you've yeah. presented today, frankly, tastes like baby food. I know. I think you've got a good brand. Thank I think Bare Naked Foods is, is clever. And that's why I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> and I'm going to offer you all of the money for half of, of a business that we've yet to create together. I think you deserve a break, and I think you're the type, kind of guy that will make it given an opportunity. <sighs> Sorry, it's, I can't believe this. It's, um... While recognising that his business needs plenty of work, Peter Jones has spotted a spark of potential in this young entrepreneur. Now, Duncan Bannatyne is ready to have his say. I'm going to make you two investment offers. I'm going to offer you the same as Peter Jones offered you. £60,000 for 50% of this business. And my second offer is £30,000 for 25% of the business, which means to get my second offer, you'd have to have another dragon to match my offer. Investments like this are investing in people. So I'll make you an offer as well. So I'm going to offer you the same as Duncan. So it'd be 30,000 for 25% of the company. I'll give me another offer, yeah. the full 60,000 for 50% of the company. So just to complicate it further, <laughs> I'd happen to work with Peter on that as well, if he was willing to split, but that's up to Peter to decide on that. Piers Linney has made a bid to align himself with Peter Jones. But will he agree to share the deal? It's normal that you would ask the Dragon, you know, what they're going to bring to the party, but I wouldn't mind asking Piers what he's going to bring. <laughs> Youth. <laughs> <laughs> good, good answer. <laughs> some, some energy. So, I, 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 no, so let, let, let me answer your question seriously. So I'm... Uh, the, I'm on a trajectory, slightly different place maybe in my 
career and the development of my business and so I can probably understand where you are a bit more, you'll find out very quickly that um, you know, I will help you get to where you deserve to be. Would you, uh, would you go into business with uh, peers? The offer is for 60,000. I'm not willing to share it with another dragon. That's fine. I'd like to accept your offer, Peter, for 60,000 pounds in return for half of my company. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well Thank you. Yeah. You feel all right? Um, Don't faint on us yet. No, I'm not going to faint on you. Yeah. Thank you very okay. much. Ross has done it. Given his shaky start, it's been a truly remarkable turnaround. <laughs>